for right. the next level of promotion. But um, if we work heartily as unto the Lord, and the Lord um, has saw fit to promote us, uh, and we continue to strive in that, um, without a doubt, there's going to be some roadblocks, some hindrances, and some giants in the way. So what would you say to someone who is um, on that pathway uh, to promotion, um, who is striving to continue to move forward in, in what God has called them to do, but they're running up against uh, giants and roadblocks? Would you then say um, that they have to get some fight? Would you then say that they have to chop off some 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 heads of giants? Uh, uh, would you then say <laughs> that <laughs> they have to find a way to move past the hindrances and the roadblocks uh, to achieve what it is they're they're striving for? Well, Ephesians chapter six kind of puts it in perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole Christian walk, yeah, but especially as it relates to. Um, promotion because he, Paul tells us to put on the armor. The full armor. Right. The whole armor which lets us know that we're in a fight. Uh huh. Anything you're doing in Christendom, it's going to be a fight. You're not gonna, it ain't going to be no cake. It's not going to be a cake walk. Uh huh. Uh, some things and, and watch this. Some people when well, God is all powerful why don't we just move folk and don't see this, let, me, let me help y'all how, how God works. God wants you to put something into it. Uh -huh. He ain't going to just move everything out the way every time you pray <laughs> so it can be easy for you. Right. I'm sorry. It don't work like that. If God did that, you wouldn't have any, you wouldn't have no courage, no your, faith, no faith, because you just expect God to do whatever you ask. Okay? Nothing. <laughs> so that's not going to, okay, well, Paul here is letting us know the reason we're, we're in a war. Uh -huh. Okay? It's not a natural war. You're not fighting the people who you think is blocking your promotion because it's really not a person that's blocking your promotion. It's a spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's a demonic spirit. Uh -huh. And so Paul deals with that here in Ephesians 6. And he says, um, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Paul said, Don't be strong in, in the Lord and the power of my might. He said, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. He said, Put on the whole armor of God. Why? Here's why you need to do it. So that you may be able to stand against the wiles. And the word wiles means tricks, schemes, plots, plans of the devil. The de when we sleep in the devil plotting, mm -hmm. when we, we need rest, but the devil is a spirit. The spirit don't rest. But be encouraged because God don't rest in And he's sovereign. <laughs> and he tells us what he gives us the... Um, the armor that we need to put on. He says, put on the whole armor. We and then he, he explains in verse 12 what, we, what, what I just said. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So you're dealing with um, an enemy that you really don't even know mm -hmm. unless you study him. Mm -hmm. And unless you see God about him and get a strategy. Okay. Um, you see, you're fighting an, an, uh, an enemy that you can't see. Okay. And he don't fight fair, he fight dirty. Okay. So so when it says in high places, what does that mean? Um, in the in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's influences. See, everybody is influenced by some spirit. Mm -hmm. You can say ain't no spirit influencing you, but okay. Some some something is influencing you. Mm -hmm. One way or the other. Mm -hmm. It's influencing you for good, it's influencing you for bad. Mm -hmm. But you're being influenced. Um because, think about this. Satan been here since the existence of the earth. Okay. Because he got kicked out of heaven. Mm -hmm. So he had plenty of time to, to, to uh, be deceitful because he's been doing it for centuries. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you ain't the, you're not the first Johnny come lady that's going to uh, think you're going <laughs> to overthrow the devil. Because all these people that been before you, it was, it was hard for them to do it them. without the help of God. Uh -huh. I mean, look at Paul, wrote three fourths of the New Testament. He had some battles with the devil. He had struggles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all did. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to take the word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, because he tells us what to do here. Um, he says, this, this spiritual wickedness in high places are principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness. And um, we know you're not hanging out in darkness if you represent light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he says, take the whole armor that you can stand, that you'll be able to withstand in the evil day. Now, to withstand means you're coming up against something, which means that 
uh, you're going to take some blows, you're going to take some punches, you, you, some stuff going to hit you. Mm-hmm. So he says to re- so that you can withstand. The whole purpose of the army is to protect you. Mm-hmm. Which means that that don't mean you, you, that means the enemy gonna hit you. Mm-hmm. If you want to fight, expect to get hit. Mm-hmm. So why is it that we when we get hit, we shocked? We shocked when we get hit. <laughs> the so devil, we, we should expect it, huh? The devil wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> okay, he doing his job all the time, twenty four seven. And when he does his job, it ought to make you do yours that much more. Be alert. Exactly. Okay. And so he says. Um, stand with your Lord's good about the truth. Okay, here we go with the integrity we was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. And, and character. Mm-hmm. You need truth. Go with your Lord's about the truth. Mm-hmm. Have on the blessed breastplate of righteousness. That means you are in right standing with God. All right, that means you took some action to be in right standing with God. Mm-hmm. It, it don't mean that you just said it. Well, let me tell you how it says in the Romans. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If thou shalt believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and God, that God is raising from the dead, he said, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto salvation, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So two things you got to do. You got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and then he talks about uh, having your feet shot with the readiness for the preparation of the gospel peace. Be ready to, to share the good news with somebody. Mm-hmm. I hear so many Christians say, well, I, I, I don't know how to witness. Do you know how to tell you? Do you know how to tell what God did for you? Mm-hmm. Do you know how to tell how God delivered you from something? The testimony. Oh, exactly. Mm-hmm. Until you are um, taught in the word, give your testimony. Just tell what God did for you. Mm-hmm. Because right right at that point, that's all you can do is give your testimony. Then you get in the word, you study the word, and you get more knowledge, you get more understanding. And then you can you can use more, you get more tools to use mm-hmm. um, to witness. All right, and then um, he says, take the shield of faith. Now, I gave you my definition, I think, the first week I was going to give faith. Mm-hmm. Faith, now I know it says, in, um, Hebrews 11 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But here's my personal definition. Uh, faith is my personal trust, my confident reliance, and obedience to God's integrity. Mm-hmm. God's integrity, God's ability. That That's my personal definition, because it kind of gives you a little more substance. Not okay. that the Hebrews 11 gives you any less, uh, but I, I'm just let's just say I broke down Hebrews. I broke it down mm-hmm. and and added some things and 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 uh, not added, but I broke it down and I made it more simplified. How about that? Because mm-hmm. you can't add anything to the Word of God, um, and so um, so it's my personal trust, confident reliance, and obedience to God's integrity. So uh, that's what the shield of faith does. So whenever you get hit. You can know and trust the enemy can't do anything to you without God's permission. Okay. He can't do anything to you without God's permission. So if it's happening, even now watch this. Even if <coughs> your actions merit something happening, God is still not going to let anything come on you that's more than you can handle. Mm-hmm. So you you uh, you make a mistake. Mm-hmm. And the result of your mistake causes something else to happen. Mm-hmm. Well, even in that, God is not going to allow you to handle, to take on more than you can handle. Mm-hmm. Because if he did, then that means he's in control. He's not sovereign. Okay. All right? Uh, so so would you say we, we have to have faith tests we are our faith our faith has to be tried. tested yes. and tried um so that we know that we're still in faith yes. uh, sometimes we lo- walk so long in faith and and if we haven't been tested or tried we don't really know if we're still uh walking in faith or just right. walking in routine well it's just like <laughs> it's it's just like being in school every so often you need to take a test mm-hmm. to to Let's figure out how, how much of what you what we've been teaching know. you've retained. You okay. still know you can utilize. Uh-huh. And so when we're going through a test and we're crying out to God and we wonder why we get no answer. Mm-hmm. I, I saw this on Facebook. It was so good. It said um, during the test the teacher doesn't talk. Mm-hmm. The, te- 
teacher is silent. That's what he said. Mm-hmm. During the test, see that the teacher is silent. So why do you? <laughs> <laughs> so we 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 in a, we in a test. God God want to see what you what you know. What you know? Yeah. He, he not going uh, I got a question. No, you, can't ask, <laughs> you can't ask questions during the test. During the test. You just got to answer, which means you just got to stand. When you've done all the stand, you got to stand. Mm-hmm. You, 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 can't ask the, you can't ask the teacher a question during the test. The time to ask the, the teacher a question is when you were, when you were in class, when, you were, when he was teaching, teaching the lesson. Okay. But not when you're going through the test. You can't ask a question. Mm-hmm. You got to man up and woman up. <laughs> okay. But, but the key... Is to stay in the race. Yes. The, the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but you have to stay in the race. You you can't win a race if you're not in it. Mm, that's true. Yeah, if you're not if you're not in it, if you if you didn't went out on the sideline, you sat down, you can't win because you disqualified. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you can't you cannot get promoted if you just if you get disqualified. You got to stay in the race. Wow, that's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so many people, they, they when the test comes, they give up. Mm-hmm. They disqualify themselves. Yeah, because they they like the they like the man that built his house on the sand. Uh huh. Um, he built his house on the sand. He didn't have a solid foundation. So when all them tests and them trials start coming their way, um, they start panicking and shaking and mm-hmm. wondering, hey, what, why is this happening to me? Well, mm-hmm. you're being tested. <laughs> And so they can't handle it. Mm-hmm. And they back down and they walk away from it. And then when somebody else who stuck it out gets promoted, well, how did he get promoted? I was, we came up around the same time, but he stayed in the race. Mm-hmm. And you quit. Or you, or you walked away. Okay. So uh, what would you say to someone who might be listening who is... Uh, being tested, um, they're in an area of promotion, um, they're walking in promotion. Let's say they're in an area of promotion on a path to promotion or they're actually walking in promotion. Uh, but they are facing giants, they're facing adversity, they're fight, facing uh, trials, and they're just at the point, they might not know they're at the point of breakthrough, um, but, but they're just before breakthrough, but they're ready to give up. Uh, what would you say to that person who's, um, and, and I've seen uh, this picture, maybe you've seen this, where this guy has is in, in this uh, tunnel and he's chopping away. He's chopping away, and just ahead you can see where where it's, where it's open. Uh, and he gets right to that place and he puts down his tool that was helping him and walks the other way. And then um, there's a picture that's just on top of that of the person who kept hammering, kept kept going, and that's similar to what you're talking about today. Um, so what would you say to a person who is just at that place uh, with the hammer and just about to hit that point of breakthrough, but they feel like giving up, they feel like walking away? What would you say to that person? Uh, I would tell you to not give up, to be encouraged. Know that God um, has your back. And again, as we've been emphasizing throughout the show, that God doesn't put on you any more than you can handle. Mm -hmm. So if you're going through something and you feel like you need to give up, just remember that the God you serve, that the God you trust, knows you can handle it. You have to ask him how to handle it. Here's here's one of the things I do when I'm in a test or I'm in a trial. I stop asking God why. I Mm -hmm. I don't ask God why I'm going through this. I don't do that anymore. I ask God, okay. I'm in test. I recognize I'm in test. I'm in trial. I'm going through something. I'm dealing with something because I didn't. I didn't pray. I didn't bind it up. I didn't did all that, mm-hmm. and I'm still in the test. Which means that God didn't want to deliver me from it. He mm-hmm. wants to take me through it. And so at that at that point, I ask God, "What are you trying to teach me? Okay, what is the lesson? What are you trying to teach me?" So if you focus not on the test or, or, um, or what you're going through per se, but, but focus on what God is trying to teach you. It's just like being in class. Uh, what, what is the lesson that's to be learned out of going through this test? Now, I'm going to say this. Just because you find out why you, I mean, you find out what God is trying to teach you, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean God going to bring you out. Just, just when, you, when you learn that, it doesn't mean you're going to come out. It just means... Now you know why you're going through what you're going through, and now you're more sensitive to pay attention to the things that you can learn. Mm-hmm. And that'll take your mind off the fact that, oh, well, it's me. I'm going through, and man, listen, we all go through something. So 